It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? Come and be my neighbor. Boys and girls, yes we are. We're going to do some math today. Can you come and play today and play at our math games? We are going to work on our number talks. We are going to have some problem solving and fun. So boys and girls, please come join us today. So boys and girls, welcome to Mrs. Esch's neighborhood. We're going to do some math today. Hmm, if we're working on number talks, should I wear my number shirt or my geometry jacket? Which one do you think? Oh, I think you're right. I'll take my number shirt today. Boys and girls, in number talks, have you been playing with them in your classroom? Number talks are marvelous. Come with me, we're going to do some more today. Good morning, NKC! Welcome to Tips and Tricks with Number Talks. I understand you've been having some talks about number talks. Let's talk about some things that may happen in your classroom. When you put an equation on the board, do sometimes your children say, well, Mrs. Esch, I did nine plus seven, and then I got 16, so I put the six down in my head, and then I moved the one, and then I added the one, the four, and the one. What does it sound like they're actually trying to do? That's correct. They're really trying to do the pencil and paper way. So what I tell my students is, no, 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 not allowed. That's a great paper and pencil way, but it is not for number talks. This is about mental math, because as you can see, if we try to line these up in our head, that's probably not the most efficient way. And someday, would you like to be able to do problems like this in your head? Well, if you keep doing that line it up and add way, you will be able to line these up on paper and pencil and do it, but you won't be able to do it in your head as fast. So what I'd like to show you today is if your children say, I added the nine and the seven, this is what I tell them. I tell them they won't be able to do that. And let's try another way. That's a great way for paper and pencil, but not for mental arithmetic. Who has another way? Tip number two. I understand that as you're talking about number talks, recording the number talks comes into the conversation. I know that that's one of the biggest challenges of doing number talks is recording what the child is thinking because it's difficult not to put your own thinking in and you're on the spot at the moment. So I wanna give you a few tips. When your children are talking to you and they're saying what they did, so for instance, someone says, well, Mrs. Ash, I did 50 plus 17, and I got 67. We're going to write the 67 right there. And notice that I write horizontally going across. Then on the second step of the problem, when I say, well, then I did 67 take away 1 equals 66, I do it in two separate equations, not in a run-along sentence. Because if I wrote it here, take away one, whoops, excuse me. If I wrote take away one here equals 66, that's like a run-on sentence in English. That's a run-on mathematics sentence. Look at that, 50 plus 17 does not equal 67 take away one. Okay? So this is inaccurate, and we don't want to teach our students that. So, whoops, let me grab my towel. We want to make sure that when we're recording, we record each section on its own. So, then I want to be sure and ask, honey, where did you, where, I don't see how you added 17. Can you talk to me about that? And then, when they tell me, well, I added one to the 49 and it became 50 because I like to use zeros. But I knew I added one too many, so I had to take one off here. I want to make sure I revoice them and make sure that the kids are with me in that explanation. So 
Again, keeping our sentences, our number sentences separate, not run on, and making sure that we point out where the actual thinking is taking place. That's tip number two. Tip number three. Sometimes when children have practiced a strategy a number of times, it would be nice to have them record it with you on a chart that could be hung in the room as a reference point for other students. So here you can see that this is one student's strategy for 47 takeaway 19. Or another way to say that is, what is the difference between 47 and 19? And this is what the student said. I know I have to find the difference between 47 and 19, so I think of a number line. So I actually drew the number line on the whiteboard, and later on we transferred it. And the student did say he was finding the difference between the two numbers. And then the student continued, I like taking away numbers that end in zero, like 10 and 20. That way I don't have to regroup. First graders would like to know this. I thought it was interesting that the, they were concerned about other students. So, he says, I made the 19 into a 20, and I went up one up on the number line. And you can see his thinking, how he went up one to 20, and then you can see he added one, and he still knows that the difference remains the same. So I had to go one up on the other number, which was 47 to 48, to keep the distance the same. So 48 take away 20 is the same as 47 take away 19. They are both 28. And here's a recording of each one to show where the 28 came from. That way, as we continue to encounter this, we have some models in the room for students to look at. That's tip number three. Tip number four. Many of you have said something about writing during the number talks time. Writing is not what we want to happen during the number talks time. We want the kids to be thinking mentally. There are certain special occasions where that might take place. I did have a student at one time that had a short-term memory deficiency, and it was suggested to me that he be allowed to write during number talks. But those are far and few between cases. However, once a week or once every two weeks, it wouldn't be bad to do an assessment of their writing. Of course, it would be after they've had plenty of opportunities to, to watch you record number talk thinking. Then they can begin to record. Here is a sample of fifth grade Jamar. His writing is about 36 times 18. He had to show it in two ways, his way and any other way he chose. So as you notice, Jamar wrote about one way, about the one method he used and showed even a, a paper and pencil way to check it. But then on the second page, he shows an alternative way to do it and even makes comments about what he thinks about the two ways. This is a way to incorporate writing into number talks. You may even skip the number talk that day in order to have time to do this, but not have them write during the number talk group session. Thanks.